Uh, finally, uh, before we get to our, our time for discussion, and don't worry, we'll have, I think, plenty of time for that, um, we have our, the last uh, presenter for today, uh, and uh, that will be Professor Jia Xiaoying, um, who is an associate professor in the history department at Sichuan University in China. She's a historian of modern China with research interests on Chinese intellectual history, and has published a book and several articles on the history of Chinese archaeology in the 20th century, um, and is currently here at Harvard working on a project focused on the history of, um, of archaeology in Sichuan, uh, particularly the uh, w many uh, Western archaeologists who were there associated with uh, an institution that was sponsored by the Nanjing Institute at the time. Um, she received her PhD from the history department at Sinyat Sen University and has trained in Chinese archaeology and is talk going to talk to us today about the origin of Chinese civilization. Thank you. Um, the title of my presentation is Chinese Archaeology and the Origin of Chinese Civilization. At first, I should explain the term Chinese Civilization, Zhongguo Wenming or Zhonghua Wenming. From the Republic of China to the People's Republic of China, Chinese archaeologists have always used this term. But in the first half of the uh, 20th century, it was um, re referred to the culture of China proper, that is the area of the Chinese Republic in which the Han ethnic group uh, was predominant, excluding Tibet, Xinjiang, Mongolia, etc. Um, as Russia and uh, As Russia and Japan uh, invaded, invaded some of these areas in the uh, 1920s and 30s, especially after 1937, Chinese scholars became worried about the implication of uh, this term uh, China proper, which later was considered in, uh, appropriate or political incorrect by many scholars. Uh, feel the term Chinese civilization should be used to refer uh, primarily to the area once called China proper. There are still a few scholars argue that uh, all of the cultures within the current bo borders of the state are Chinese civilization. The pursuit of the origin of Chinese civilization has been part of Chinese archaeology from the very beginnings. Uh, some aspects of this discourse have remained unchanged during its 100-year history, while others have changed. I would like to address it in a chronological order with three periods. The first period is from 1920 to 1949. The second period is from uh, 1949 to 1990s. The third one uh, is from 1990s to the present. Uh, 100 years ago, the Chinese people abandoned the monarchy and adopted a republic. At the same time, they also began to establish the modern system of academic disciplines. While there was already, already a centuries old tradition of epigraphy and the study of ancient artifacts, archaeology was established in the first half of the 20th century as a new discipline. Before the end, Chinese scholars were not concerned with the questions of where Chinese or Chinese civilization came from. Uh, these kinds of questions came from Europe and uh, America. People in China found these countries more advanced and uh, began to learn from them. In the early 20th century, Western sinologists distinguished the Chinese classics from reliable history. For example, sinologist Friedrich Hertz um, some translated geology books included discussions of human origins. Orientalist Terry de Lacperi said that the Chinese had migrated from Babylonia because he thought that they had very similar scripts and calendars, uh, etc. Geologist J.G. Anderson discovered painted pottery in Henan and Gansu provinces and uh, supposed it was possibly diffused from the West. 
a skepticism towards the classical texts of ancient China became more and more popular in the early 20th century China. Skepticism towards ancient texts is considered an important reason for the establishment of Chinese modern archaeology by archaeologists like Dr. Li Ji. Li Ji graduated from Harvard's anthropology department in 1923. He was one of the earliest Chinese archaeologists. Later, he became the head of archaeology team of the Institute of History and the Philology in Academia Sinica, and was renowned for excavating and studying archaeological relics in Anyang, Henan province. Li Ji and his colleague Fu Sinian, the head of uh, the History and Philology Institute were sympathetic to this skepticism, but preferred to be researchers rather than skeptics. They regarded excavation as an independent dis discipline, but still considered it to belong to history rather than anthropology, like in America. Um, and uh, they considered the European and American anthropologists too political and Eurocentric not having conducted enough basic research before implementing their nomenclature over peoples and cultures of the world. Uh, for example, the concept of the Mongolian race. They felt that Chinese scholars had a chance to review uh, uh, anthropological theories to make them more scientific. The classical texts doubted by skeptics were in fact one of weapons uh, to offend anthropological Eurocentrism. They also shared with skeptics some new historical ideas. For example, the idea that Xia, Shang, and Zhou were three almost contemporary ethnic groups rather than three successive dynasties as recorded in most history books since the Han Dynasty. As a region of the Chinese people, Li Ji argued that physical measurement had been conducted on such a small number of Chinese people that it was inadequate to prove there was a single Chinese physical type. Moreover, Chinese classical texts provided many hi historical records of ethnic groups migrating and intermixing. Since there was no single Chinese physical type, either now or in the past, he said that what should be studied was not the origin of the Chinese, but the evolution of various ancient ethnic groups. This was applied to the origins of Chinese cultures. Li Ji said that our culture was a cluster of elements. Then how could one element be taken as the standard to judge the origin of the culture or civilization if uh, divination on Boas was the most important symbol. In Shi culture could be said to have derived from Chen Ziya culture. If bronze smelting was the symbol, in Shi culture was influenced by the West. Uh, if the decorated patterns on bronze was the standard, in Shi culture may have descended from the wood carving tradition around the Pacific area. Therefore, he argued that Chinese civilization could only be narrated from the Shang dynasty, but he also predicted that it might be possible to trace it earlier than the Shang dynasty if there were more discoveries in the future. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in uh, uh, 1949, another audacious archaeological narrative became the mainstream. That was the unilinear development of Chinese ethnic groups, which was very explicit in Chinese history textbooks and general history books. Political pressure played a part in this. But it should be noted that our unilinear uh, Neolithic cultural succession was recognized not only in mainland China, but also in American Chinese archaeology circle uh, at that time. The situation changed gr greatly in the 1980s. Sha Nai, the effective leader of Chinese archaeology circle, suggested that Chinese archaeologists should discuss theories when they studied the origin of Chinese civilization, such as what the material symbols of civilization were. Sha Nai still adopted a linear order from Paleolithic 
Dionysic to the historical period, but if we look more closely at his articles, his emphasis on theory is worth paying attention to. He suggested that perhaps cities, provinces, and writing should be considered as the markers of civilization, which implied that the origin of Chinese civilization could not be traced back into the distant past, but might have begun with the uh, Xia dynasty. This was very close to Li Ju's opinion. A contemporary of Xianai, Su Bin Qi reconstructed the Neolithic Chinese multicultural mode, uh, model, mostly based on the analysis of pottery. Moreover, he used his multicultural model to explain the origin of Chinese civilization, arguing that Chinese civilization was characterized by the mixing of various cultures. He impelled Chinese archaeologists to focus on excavations and classific classifying concrete archaeological materials and uh, discouraged the use of social science theory. In fact, he dismissed Shana's goal of giving a time limit to the discussion of Chinese civilization. Zhang Zhongpei, a Su student and also a leading figure of Chinese archaeology, adopted Morgan Anger's evolutionary his, uh, theory to explain several Neolithic uh, symmetries and cultures in 1980s, but was attacked by the new anthropological theories of Tong Anzhen and Wang Ningshen. Later, Du Zhengsheng argued that both of them should abandon uh, abandoned theories which came from far away, and the Chinese classical texts had more reasonable and reliable clues to explain archaeological phenomena. However, Zhang Zhongpei rebutted that they were all missing the point. Although he had previously employed theoretical explanation, he now argued that the most important task of archaeology was the basic analysis of relics uh, such as classification and the new uh, technologies and, and the explanation with theories was inferior. Su's idea of unity with diversity was accepted by the political authorities from the Xia Shangzhou chronological project to the origin of Chinese civilization project. The Chinese government financed and continues to finance uh, Chinese archaeological research, and at the same time, Su also received support from abroad, which mo made his influence stronger and broader. However, Su's conceptions on the origin of Chinese civilization are popular just on the surface. Um, they are not taken very seriously. The in insufficiency of discussion on theory was, has resulted in an abundance of research on cultural uh, diffusion based on single relics and some less rigorous research on the process of civilization. His advocates occupy many important positions, but some of them also changed his idea considerably, such as emphasizing the central role of the central plans in the development of various archaeological relics. According to foreign um, archaeologists like Bruce Traeger, one issue that is entangled with the 100-year history of Chinese archaeology and the um, questions of the origin of Chinese civilization is nationalism. However, if we think over the background and the details we can find in the former third of the century, nationalistic color was the lightest and the middle third had the heaviest nationalism. The last few decades are very complex. On the surface, it seems like an overflow of nationalism, but in sense, much of the problem is a lack of discussion on how to explain archaeological relics and our belief that archaeology should focus on the careful study of relics rather than theoretical discussions. Uh, they this, this think that there have already been too many theories in European and American archaeology, which are probably a lot more reliable than Chinese classical texts. So they look down on theory and consider it dispensable. 
But if there is no knowledge of anthropology, scholarship based narrowly on classical texts is bound to have a limited range of ideas. Moreover, the less attention is paid to foreign archaeology, the less sympathy they can get for the argument that Chinese history followed a special path. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.